everyone, James with TFB TV, and welcome to episode two of TFB TV Goes to Hollywood. Many of us are Pirates of the Caribbean fans, not me. So many of you are Pirates of the Caribbean fans. So we decided to do a look at the guns of Pirates of the Caribbean because Independent Studio Services, where we went two summers ago, hung out with Larry Zanoff and the crew with 511, took some video over there. I asked Larry what some of his most interesting guns were in the vault, and he started talking about Pirates of the Caribbean. I was like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Not a big Pirates guy. Um, pass. But then he said, no, 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 it's really cool because in looking at the guns of the Pirates of the Caribbean that they made at ISS, it kind of gives you a new understanding for prop guns and how prop guns are made and how difficult it can be, not to mention the solutions that they come up with to make these guns. So even though I wasn't really that excited about this initial video concept, I thought it ended up being pretty cool. Speaking of pretty cool, if you like this material and if you want to hear more about Larry, who is the man, uh, this is a totally gratuitous plug for Larry. I'm going to drop the TFB podcast, the firearm blog. Pete, our head editor, does a podcast for the firearm blog, and he's got an awesome interview with Larry. We've got three more videos in the series on top of this one, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, guns and pirates. Oh, almost forgot. Best joke about pirates. I will pin to the top of the comment section below, so leave them. No punchlines involving poop decks. This is TFB TV, a classy YouTube channel. Here's the video. Hey everyone, James again with TFB TV. Now, when I think of Pirates of the Caribbean, I don't necessarily think of guns, but I do think of it as one of the most popular series of movies of all time. And it also had guns in it. I'm here at ISS with Larry. You guys recognize Larry from Hollywood Weapons. Larry, you did some work on the Pirates of the Caribbean series of films, right? Absolutely. And before we get into the guns, though, do you know why pirates are so angry all the time? Oh, geez. Why, Larry? I don't know. They just are. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Well, I'm glad to be here in this treasure chest of guns. So why don't we just go ahead and get depth into it? Uh, don't want to jack your screen time. Sparrow, no details. Let's get into these guns. Okay, matey. So here's the thing about pirate movies, whatever franchise they may be. Um, we're dealing with black powder firearms. Um, back in the day, it didn't really matter what kind of firearms you used. Uh, in fact, a lot of the, the pirate guns back in the day were chopped down trapdoor Springfields that had a rubber hammer put on it. And if you watch the old Treasure Islands and all that, when they fired the gun, you could actually see the rubber hammer kind of bouncing back and forth. Nowadays, you can't get away with that. The viewing public is much more educated about the firearms. The directors are very knowledgeable about firearms. And like we talked before, the props become very, very important, iconic items in the film. So you don't want to fake it if you, you don't have to. That means that you actually have functional flintlocks where you're out on set pouring powder down the barrel and everything, ramrods and all. And this particular one, is uh, one of Elizabeth's guns from the Pirates uh, franchise. You can see when we built it, we actually put the serial number of Liz02. So there were three of these made. This particular one happens to be uh, number two. Very nice little uh, Queen Anne type screw off barrel. Very much what a female back in the day would have been carrying. Wait, so did you guys make this one? We built that one. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because I'm holding it, I'm looking at it, and it feels like, I don't know, like an 18th or 19th. I know nothing about black powder, Larry. I have to confess, and I think everybody watching knows that, but this feels like it, it should be like centuries old. Well, then we did our job correctly, you know, because we built that gun and then we aged it down correctly. You know, when you're doing a period film, you have to think about those things. If, if this is a pirate and he's had this gun stuck in his belt for you know, 10 years out in the salt water and all that. Is it going to be a brand new looking gun? No, it's not. We all know that black powder cause, causes a certain kind of patina to develop on the weapon. If you don't clean it enough, it gets that kind of aged look and everything. So these are all things that we have to think about too when we're making stuff for film use. Yeah, and it, it totally blew me away. You guys actually have a team of art, a large team of artists. Yes. 
and, and technicians that do this, that go through and, and damage these guns and add the wear and tear? Well, I mean, I think th this is one of the spots where you, you look at firearms and you can appreciate that a firearm can be a form of art. And we do have artists, all the gunsmiths that we have here. Uh, it, it's a very creative, artistic environment that we're in. You, you kind of look at that and you go, oh, you know, should it be, be red rust or should it be more kind of mm -hmm. black tone like that? Well, he was out in the salt water and it should look like this. Those are things that we have to research and be knowledgeable about because when you're the armor on a movie set, you're expected to have all the answers for that type of thing. And uh, let's say you'll have this and someone will come up and go, well, how fast could that pirate would would have been able to reload that gun. Well, I don't know, he's a pirate. Did, did, he, did he go to the military? Did he get training and now he's a pirate? You can't ask those questions. You have to have those answers you know, right away. So we do a lot of our own research as well. Talking about artificial wear and tear, uh, this one, this looks like a blunderbuss that I retrieved from under my refrigerator. Yeah, what do we have going on I, I, I call this the mossy uh, blunderbuss. In one of the Pirates movies, they have the zombies that come up out of the water. They've got all this algae and green stuff all over them. As you can see, this is not wet. It looks wet like it's got, you know, fungus and everything growing on it. But this is a, a finish that our paint department came up with so that they could spray it on and make it look like it came up out of the water. And how many of these did you have to make? So we had dozens of blunderbusses. Uh, Real ones, or, or did you guys manufacture these as well? Some of them are reproductions. Some of them we um, manufactured, depending upon the character, if it had to be a little bit more unique. How much time are we talking in man hours for something like this? That's probably what you're holding in your hand. If we, if we use the reproduction to get it to what this looks like right now, it's probably about a week worth of, of work. It's about wow. 40 man hours. And you've got to do that a dozen times, two dozen, three dozen times to make sure you have enough for the film. Exactly. All right, now we've got one that's a little bit cleaner. Uh, what do we have? So this, so this guy is a little bit more unique. Um, this was a gun we were going to use in Pirates. We did not. It was never seen on screen on Pirates, but it did wind up in the movie Master and Commander. Um, this is what's called a knock volley gun. Very true to the period, and uh, it looks like kind of a handheld Gatling gun because it's got this circular form to all these barrels, but in fact, they all go off at the same time. A lot of people think that this was used for clearing decks, but think about this. There's, there's not necessarily a spread out of this. So the, the deck clearing, you're only clearing that much of an area. What this was really very successful for was firing a big volley right into the sails of a ship. And if you could set the sails on fire, then the enemy can't maneuver away from you. And I've got to tell you, I've shot this live before for the um, soundtrack of uh, Master and Commander, and six 45 caliber balls all going off at the same time. The recoil is absolutely horrendous. Oh, I, I, so yeah, it's not a very yeah. high volume use item, but the British Navy did have a lot of them, and they, they did use them for many, many years. Yeah, so that had to have been kind of awkward. I mean, you would shoot this thing, you'd totally screw up the other dude's sails, but then you'd have to retrieve the guy who shot it from over the deck. After yeah, the, the recoil line. is very, very violent. I mean, each one of those barrels is a 45 caliber barrel. They all go off at the same time. Yeah, you might want to just shoot it like this and just let it go flying. Right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> This one, Larry, you, now you mentioned that these were real guns. These are real guns. Were really used. Yep. Uh, it, did you guys make this one or was this? We, we did make a pair of them for, for the film. Here's the thing. Even when you're dealing with a black powder or flintlock kind of period show, you really don't want to be using original guns on it. Back in the day, the metallurgy was not as good. And as we all know, we all know this, right? We all know the black powder corrodes the gun from the inside out if you're not very meticulous about maintenance. So using an original gun that might blow up when out on set is not a good idea. Also, we need multiples. And if we had to go out and hunt down an original, how many originals do you think we could find that match right. exactly? It's very difficult to do that. So as a result, we tend to like using modern materials we build things ourselves, and it's a lot safer out on set. I would imagine it'd be pretty complicated to do a movie where you've got primarily black powder rifles and guns versus like modern centerfire auto loading. Well, think about it. If you had an M4 and you ran out of ammunition, they yell cut, and they go, okay, we're doing this again. 
All you got to do is insert another magazine, drop the bolt, and you're ready to go again, right? Unfortunately, with something like this, you can't do that. So instead of renting one gun for that scene, I need to rent the production three guns for that scene, and they're all identical. We shoot, bang, take one, swap it out. Bang, take two, swap it out. And we got some poor armorer in the background who's madly loading these guns. And if it's a big movie like the Pirates franchise, we'll actually have a crew that comes in at night and cleans all the guns and a crew that comes in during the day to run all the guns. Now, if you can't estimate this and just ignore it, but I'm just curious, I mean, how much more expensive, like two times, three times, four times, how much more expensive is it to run a movie where you get the same amount of guns, like the, the well, I guess you wouldn't have the same amount of guns is the, the thing, but the same amount of guns on screen and the same amount of action and you've got AR-15s in one film, and then you've got you know the blunderbuss and all that. And in a way, it almost balances itself out because I probably need three times more guns on a period black powder movie, so I can swap them out. But then I also don't have brass shell casings and blanks that I need to worry about. Whereas I may have fewer guns with M16s or AKs, but I'm shooting thousands and thousands and thousands of blanks. So cost-wise, it kind of balances itself out where the big difference is is the labor intensity period films with black powder firearms are so much more labor intensive and you see that's why i loved coming here to iss and talking with larry getting the tour because there are a lot of things that that you wouldn't even think of as somebody who just goes to watch a film and it's really been enlightening to to speak with you and to find out what iss and what you guys do here guys we've got an entire series of iss films coming in the next few weeks. So stay tuned. Larry, thanks a ton for showing us the guns of Pirates of the Caribbean. Our, sure. right? Hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs>